Good morning. I am uh, Jerry Hayes, president of the Benicia Historical Society, and on behalf of the Historical Society, I would like to welcome you all to today's Memorial Day ceremonies. Before we begin, we would like to recognize a few officials who are present today. First of all, Rebecca Roberts, representing Congressman Mike Thompson, representing Assemblymember Tim Grayson, Mike Sponsler, Mayor Elizabeth Patterson, Councilmember Lionel Largaspata, Solano County Board of Education President Dana Dean, Vice Mayor Christina Strawbridge is also present, and Solano County Supervisor Monica Dean, Brown. 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 Monica Brown, uh, Solano <laughs> District Trustee Diane Ferrucci, Venetia Police Chief Eric Upson, Venetia Fire Chief Josh Chadwick, Faye Jenkins from the Presidio of Monterey, and also present is Council Member Steve Young. We also welcome the German delegation from the Naval Postgraduate School in Monterey, including Major Bernd Weissenberger. Lieutenant Max Peepers and Lieutenant Anton Angierski, from both of who are from the German Air Force. On this day, we honor the memory of those who gave their lives in defense of the United States Constitution and the freedoms we enjoy every day. We show our gratitude to all those men and women who serve now or have served our country in every branch of the military. At this time, I would like to ask for all veterans in the audience to please stand. Thank you very much. Today we have been granted the honor of two flyovers. They will include a U.S. Coast Guard San Francisco Station MH-65D helicopter sometime during the ceremony, <laughs> and a Travis Air Force Base 60th Air Mobility Wing C-17 at approximately 1025. It may be very loud. <laughs> Today's color guard will be made up of members of American Legion Post 101, VFW Post 3928, VFW Auxiliary, and the Sons of the American Legion. Without further ado, I would invite you all to stand as the color guard posts the colors. Please remain standing. I would like to introduce to you the Diablo Regional Concert Band and their director, Cora Martins. They will lead us in the national anthem. Thank you. 
I would now like to introduce the Venetia Girl Scouts, who will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. At this time, I would like to introduce retired Navy Master Chief Larry J. Miller as president of the Benicia Historical Society, who will lead us in a prayer. Once again, we are gathered here today to honor those brave men and women who gave the ultimate sacrifice to protect our country and our freedoms. During these trying times, it's imperative that we pay attention to how some of those freedoms that they died for are slipping away. Prayer helps, and there are many ways to pray. Some Christians bow their heads and fold their hands. Some Native Americans regarding, regard dancing as a form of prayer. Some Sufis whirl, Hindus chant mantras. Jewish prayer may involve swaying back and forth and bowing. Muslims practice Salat, kneeling and prostration in their prayers. Quakers keep silent. Some prayer according to standardized rituals and liturgies. But know this, we were all one. This is from Rabbi Lord Jonathan Sack. For though my faith is not yours, and your faith is not mine, if we are free to light our own flame, together we can banish some of the darkness of the world. Let's have one minute of silence for each of us to pray in our own way. For those brave souls that have passed, those that have come back with injuries, both seen and unseen, those service members currently serving, and their loved ones who have also sacrificed enormously. Thank you, Larry. As president of the Benicia Historical Society, it is my honor to give you a brief history of this cemetery. The Benicia Army Cemetery is the oldest U.S. military post-cemetery in the Pacific States. And I think I hear the approaching Coast Guard. Give us another one. The Benicia Army Cemetery is the oldest U.S. military post-cemetery in the Pacific States. It was a post-cemetery for the Benicia Barracks, which from 1849 to 1857 served as the headquarters for the U.S. Army's Pacific Division. For much of that period, 
Venetia Barracks contained the only Army hospital on the West Coast. The cemetery contains 211 internments dating from 1849 to 1958. These include 123 U.S. military personnel, nine foreign military personnel who were German and Italian prisoners of war, 61 civilians, six, 18 of unknown affiliation, and three pets. Members of the Ordnance Department, Quartermaster Corps, Signal Corps, Corps of Engineers, Infantry, Artillery, Cavalry, and Marine Corps are buried here. The cemetery also contains the remains of women and children who de were dependents of soldiers stationed at Benicia. John Foley, who was awarded a Congressional Medal of Honor, is among the unknown. In the past, headstones were simple wood markers and information about the deceased was painted on. Over time, this information was lost, and when the disinterred were reinterred here, the graves were marked as unknown. The earliest dated burial at the cemetery was First Lieutenant Charles E. Jarvis, who died June 8, 1849, at Sonoma, California. Emily G. Brammer, wife of Staff Sergeant Charles Brammer, died June 12, 1958, and was the last person buried in the cemetery. The Benicia Army Post Cemetery is listed on the National Register of Historic Places as part of the Benicia Arsenal, Benicia Barracks Historic District. The Benicia Historical Society sponsors this annual Memorial Day ceremony in order to remember and honor those who are buried here, as well as all men and women of the armed forces. We have the late Harry Wassman to thank for beginning the tradition of these Memorial Day ceremonies here at the Arsenal Cemetery more than 35 years ago. We thank Harry for establishing the tradition that we continue and for setting the standard of excellence that we strive to meet every year. Harry has made the past more present for all of us. Every year, our Memorial Day ceremony honors those who get, have given their lives in service to our country and Constitution, as well as those who are serving or who have served in the uniform services. And now for the placing of the wreaths. As I call your names, please come forward to prepare for the presentation. The Benicia Boy Scouts with retired Navy Master Chief Larry Miller of the Benicia Historical Society. Oren Ray, Commander, American Legion, Post 101. Sean Hevener, Commander, VFW, Post 3928. They will be placing the wreath on the grave of a U.S. soldier. Ingeborg Junginger, Vice President of the United German American Societies of the East Bay. Barbara Clement, Major Bernd Weissenberger, German Army. Lieutenant Max Pipers and Lieutenant Anton Andzierski of the German Air Force. They will lay the wreath on the grave of a German prisoner of war. It is with sadness that we report the passing last year of Marie Hoffman, longtime participant in our wreath laying ceremony. We will miss Marie. Venetia Boy Scouts will lay the wreath on the grave of the Italian prisoner of war. 
Heather Graves, Jack Elliott, and Baxter will lay the wreath on the grave of a military service pet. The Diablo Regional Band will perform America the Beautiful during these presentations. Please join me in standing while the wreaths are presented. Bad timing. <laughs> it is now my pleasure to introduce to you uh, Venetia's Poet Laureate, Tom Stanton. Good morning. It is an honor and a pleasure to be with you today, and I thank you for inviting me. This day, and for the future of all days is represented in a covenant. I've selected two poems. One of the two poems is a song. I hope that's all right. The first poem was written and later printed when Memorial Day was still called Decoration Day. It's by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. I will try to do it justice. Sleep, comrades, sleep and rest on this field of the grounded arms where foes no more molest nor sentries shot alarms. Ye have slept on the ground before and started to your feet at the cannon's sudden roar or the drum's redoubling beat. But in this camp of death, no sound your slumber breaks. Here is no fevered breath. No wound that bleeds and aches. All is repose and peace. Untrampled lies the sod. The shouts of battle cease. It is the truce of God. Rest, comrades. Rest and sleep. The thoughts of men shall be as sentinels to keep your rest from danger free. Your silent tents of green 
We deck with fragrant flowers. Yours has the suffering been. The memory shall be ours. The second poem is a song that I didn't realize was probably more of a poem. When I was young, both of my fathers served in World War II, and it's familiar to me. It was written by Eddie Seiler, Saul Marcus, and Guy Wood in 1944. Till then, my darling, please wait for me. Till then, no matter when it will be, someday I know I'll be back again. Please wait till then. Our dreams will live though we are apart. Our love I know it'll keep in our hearts. Till then, when the world will be free, please wait for me. Although there are oceans we must cross and mountains that we must climb, I know every gain must have a loss. So pray that our loss is nothing but time. Till then, let's dream of what there will be. Till then, we'll call on each memory. Till then, when I hold you again, please wait. Till then. Thank you. That Colonel Ford assumed command of the Presidio of Monterey. June 12, 2018, and his previous assignment was as the G2 Chief of Operations for the 8th U.S. Army in the Republic of Korea since June of 2016. There's met much more, but without further ado, I would like to introduce to you Colonel Greg Ford. Good morning, and thank you for attending today's Memorial Day ceremony in such a historic and beautiful place. I would like to recognize our special guests, but Jerry already did so, so I just want to say thank you for coming. Today is a somber day, as we remember those who have died in service to our nation, and it is only fitting that we do so in the oldest military cemetery on the West Coast. This beautiful place is a hollow ground where military personnel, civilians, and even those who fought our nation German and Italian POWs are buried. So thank you to our German contingent for coming to represent. On this Memorial Day, I ask you to think about those you know and those you remember who have given their last full measure of devotion in service to our nation. Memory and remembrance is a theme I will focus on. Although personal memories may fade, it is our shared memory that becomes a history of those we have lost. And seeing this amazing attendance here today, I know that Benicia's memory is strong. Memorial Day is particularly poignant this year as we commemorate the 75th anniversary of the invasion of Europe on June 6. This invasion, which involved over 24,000 airborne soldiers and 160,000 soldiers conducting this in, an amphibious assault, it was upon the European continent that 2,499 Americans died in service to their country on that day in 1944. This is the largest amphibious operation in the history of the world, and its effects are still felt. All this occurred because Americans stepped up and said, I'm going to serve the nation, and this will not happen on my watch. It's because of that service that so many families could show a direct tie to someone who served. Over 16 million Americans served the United States Armed Forces during World War II at the cost of 405,399 killed in action, 671,278 wounded, and 130,201 American prisoners of war. This 16 million served a population of, out of roughly 132 million meaning that 12% of the population was in uniform during World War II. On the home front, 
things changed women stepped up and grew from 25 percent of the workforce to 36 percent by the mid-1940s. Everyone rose to the challenge to ensure that we could defeat the aggression by the Axis nation. And our own Benicia Arsenal had a huge part as it grew from 85 civilian employees before 1940 to 4,545 by October of 1942. And that growth is where our PWs came from as 250 Italian and 400 Germans worked in the arsenal as well. It is this greatest generation that has served us all and set the conditions for the success we enjoyed in this American century. I ask you all to join in me and recognize the greatest generation. Ask if they stand if they can. As we have never fought a world war again, and our greatest generation slowly fades away, we're losing much of our connections between the military and the nation we support. Instead of 12% uniform, now there is less than one half of 1%. What remains for most is only the memory of a family member who served. This makes ceremonies like this, especially in this historic location, critical to strengthening those ties. That is why I want to extend a personal thank you for allowing us to be here today and express my respect for those who have died in service to our nation and my sincere thanks to those who remember. As we gather here today to remember those who fell and defend our country, I ask you a moment to take a moment to thank them and their families. Military service is never easy, but families also face a burden. The burden of never knowing what is occurring, fearful of the knock on the door announcing the loved one has passed, and finally the challenge of starting to live again after the death of their loved one. I personally can't imagine the dread of hearing about a big battle in Europe or the Pacific and wondering if your loved one was in it and if they're okay, and then not knowing for several weeks, waiting for their loved one's letter to arrive. However, our military families who have suffered a loss are never alone. We have learned from the past, and we ensure that we stay in contact with our Gold Star families. Do I have any Gold Star family members here today? If we did, I just ask you to recognize them because they too bear a burden every day following up as well. So please let's give them a round of applause. They bear a burden of unanswered questions we can't resolve, but please know that we are with them every step of the way. We all share the memories of your loved one that hopefully provide you some solace in the future. Benicia Cemetery is unique because of its residents. We have foreign military members, we have civilians, and as Jerry mentioned, we have a Medal of Honor recipient, Sergeant John Foley, Bravo Company, 3rd U.S. Cavalry. It is because of this unique populace, I feel it exemplifies that all is great about our nation. Sergeant Foley was an immigrant, the German and Italian POWs were new to our country, yet they were buried in the same plot of land as Americans born in the nation. And that is what I ask you to focus on and remember. Our nation is built by those who come and want to improve themselves, their families, and their new home. It is our integration of our new members that has been the hallmark of military service. I personally have had the privilege of leading non-U.S. citizens in combat and then seeing become U.S. citizens forward deployed in Iraq and Afghanistan through their service. My own father-in-law immigrated from Norway in the 1940s and became a U.S. citizen while serving the U.S. Army in Germany. They came to our nation with dreams and aspirations, but also dreamed to return something to a land that has given us so much. Just as the greatest generation heard the call and responded and built the world we live in, they responded so that others may live in peace, safety, security, and prosperity that their sacrifices enabled. We owe them a debt of gratitude, and we must continue to build upon their base. I had also had another soldier who heard the call and responded. This soldier and I served together in Iraq in 2005. She joined the Army Reserve in 1999, right out of high school, and served in the 203rd MI Battalion out of Aberdeen Proving Ground, Maryland. She's also a proud graduate of the Defense Language Institute, which is on the Presidio Monterey. She was activated and served in one of our augmented tactical human intelligence teams. As the Army recognized the brigade combat teams, the ones doing the fighting, didn't have enough human intelligence personnel, we were sent teams to help us and she came to 1st Brigade Combat Team, 101st Airborne, Airborne Division, Bastogne, on 20 November 2005, right before Thanksgiving. We immediately sent her to the hardest area we had, Hoesia. Hoesia was home to a wide variety of operations, including former Iraq government and military members, as well as Sunni tribes. It was there on Christmas Eve 2005 that she was attacked and killed in an ambush in Hoesia. I was in the talk that day, and we heard the college with the radio and the response by the Quick Reaction, quick reaction Force then heard the casualty count come in. Then I heard 203rd MI Battalion, 
and those were my fellow MI soldiers. Soldiers who I had allocated on the battlefield to gather intelligence for our commanders. With heavy hearts on a cold Christmas Eve that bled over on a Christmas day, we gathered for a ramp ceremony for her and those killed in the attack. For those who don't know, ramp ceremony is where everyone gathers the aircraft, they'll load our fallen on, and then we pair our fallen respect as they fly back to be received by their families back in the States. Her family received notification on Christmas Eve, utterly ruined their Christmas holiday. She died that day, but she lives on every day with those who serve with her and the memory of her adopted country. I say adopted because Sergeant Myla L. Maraviosa, United States Army Reserve, emigrated to the United States from the Philippines in 1997 and made her home in Hawaii where she graduated from Leilihua High School, right outside the school field barracks. Although a U.S. citizen, she is not buried in the United States, as her family requested she be buried back in the family cemetery in the Philippines, next to her grandfather, so family can visit. Which is exactly the right answer, so that the family can get the comfort of her physical presence. Those of us who serve with her remember or feel her presence, as she is always with us, just as all those who have made the ultimate sacrifice for our nation are remembered by their battle buddies. Combat provides vivid memories that are carved in a veteran's mind. Losing a comrade is one that we'll never forget. Nor should we do so as they die so that others may live. Just as the Coast Guard flyover reminds that show the oneness of service members today to do the same. Before I close, I want to thank the Diablo Regional Concert Band and for all those who came today. You all prove that you remember and honor those who have fallen. And finally, I'd like to close with John 13, 15. Greater love hath no man than this that a man laid down his life for his friends. Those who died in service to our nation had more friends than they ever know, as you all represent today. They have provided safety and security for more and more every Americans every year. Just as the greatest generation provided us the way forward from those dark years of war into the American century, we all need to keep building upon that future in honor and memory of those who have served our nation. Thank you and may God bless America. As we close our Memorial Day ceremony, I'd like to ask Command Sergeant Major Roberto Marshall, Presidio Monterey, to read the military oath of enlistment. After he has finished, we will move immediately to the final segments of the program without any breaks. I will point out that the service veterans of Northern California Honor Guard will muster in front of the Rose Garden while the Diablo Regional Concert Band plays the Navy hymn. Our buglers today for TAPS are Thomas Martinez and Tara Smith, Monterey High School, JROTC. The colors will be retired while Lloyd Christensen plays Amazing Grace on the bagpipes. Please rise and remain standing until they are finished. I, Roberto Marshall, do solemnly swear that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic, that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same, and that I will obey the orders of the President of the United States and the orders of the officers appointed over me according to regulations and the Uniform Code of Military Justice, so help me God.
Please be seated. This ends our Memorial Day ceremony. I would like to add a special thanks to several people who did not get noted in the program. Cemetery improvements and coordination were provided by Laura Prishmont Quimby and Faye Jenkins of the Presidio of Monterey. Beverly Mahoney of the Benicia American Legion, our Honor Guard Coordinator. Thanks to Patricia Mahoney, Ashley Casagranda, Mario Lazzarato, and Deborah Miller from Amports for helping with traffic control and transportation. Thanks to all our contributors and volunteers. A video of today's ceremony will be available on the Benicia Historical Society website. On behalf of the Benicia Historical Society, I would like to invite you to join us for light refreshments. The members of the Historical Society take great pride in our Memorial Day ceremony and invite you to become a member. Events such as this are part of what makes Benicia such a special place to live, and all it takes is dedicated people, time, and a few dollars. Please consider joining and or making a donation. A membership application is in today's program. Thank you all for taking part in this year's Memorial Day ceremony. And finally, please take the time to appreciate our historic cemetery and thank a veteran or member of the military for their service. Thank you all for coming.